I am utilizing a Christy Hartman stencil to create a canvas. And I have been using stencils in what I call my coffee cup prompts. And I've been utilizing stencils of individuals that support my channel, that have supported me in my Facebook group, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. And I have purchased their stencils and I am utilizing one after another. Now, Christie's I have used before, but I used it in a non-traditional way and utilized it to create a wine bottle water wick for my flower pots. And I wanted to show it today in a more traditional format and I have used it to create these canvases. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. And once again, I'm using Christy Hartman stencils. You can purchase them over at PM Artist Studio. And for any purchase over $35, you can get a 10% discount by utilizing that code PEGFAN10. So I hope you'll scoot over there and take a look at their selection. I'm pulling out my gel press and utilizing this stencil in a more traditional way. I am starting with some black and it looks like I am out of Mars Black and that is something that I definitely need to go pick up. But I am going to just put in some Payne's Gray and we're going to run with the Payne's Gray. I love that color as well and in this particular one there will be a little bit of that black mixed in. I'm utilizing Christie's stencil, the Sunflower Gate and the Sunflower Bunch and I'm putting the individual sunflowers where I have blank space by putting that larger sunflower stencil. So I want to pick up the color that is in the open areas and I'll set that aside, pull the stencil off and allow that just a little bit of time to dry to the touch. I did put down a yellow transparent paint. I lost that footage, but you can see that it is down. It is just a golden uh, transparent yellow oxide. And now I'm laying down some turquoise on top of that just in a random. And I thought I'd go ahead and put some of these stencils down on that to see if I could get some additional um, images, if you will. So all of that color is now down. I'm just fanning it with a piece of cardboard here to kind of speed up the drawing. And now I'm laying down a coat of orange. putting the marks from the cardboard in that orange. And now I want to pull that with a white. So I have the Payne's Gray and Black as my first layer, some transparent yellow as my second layer, turquoise as the third, orange as the fourth, and now I am pulling it with some white. So let's see what we get. And I'm not <clears throat> the best with the gel press. I am doing the best that I can, and I do think I come up with some images that are pretty interesting and I love the way that print turned out but I'm not seeing a tremendous amount of that initial or that bottom layer on there. So I'm going to go ahead and take those stencils, put a little paint gray out, pull out a cosmetic sponge and I'm going to reapply them and put them back in. So, you know, I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong here. I may not have let that initial layer dry enough and it got melded into my second, third, or fourth layer. Or I may have left it on the plate. 
but in any event I think that the print that I did receive was beautiful wasn't what I was trying to do so I want to really represent this stencil so I am going to reapply it here at the top or after the fact so there we go so I think that looks pretty good but I can't stop messing with it so <laughs> I'm going to play a little bit more I had one little spot that I thought needed correcting so I pulled out my fan pr brush and some gold paint and I think I'll just splatter some gold on there and hit just hit the paper with that fan brush to create those interesting marks that those that fan brush creates as well so I've got the splatters going on and I got a dap here a dap there And now what I think I'll do is take one of those individual stencils and just tap in some gold sunflowers on top of everything. So I might have overworked this. <laughs> I could have left it alone, I think, at, at, the, at the very first, but I'm not unhappy with, with the way this has turned out. And I wanted to keep all of this in to just kind of show you, you know, um, everything doesn't always go as you have planned. But if you keep working with something, you'll get something that you'll be able to use in a collage, you know, pull it apart and you'll find some interesting places in it. And I think... For the most part, this turned out to be a pretty decent print, and I think it goes to show that what you have in your mind and what you receive is not always one and the same. And if you continue to work with something, you might overwork it, but it will still be utilize utilizable or be able to be utilized in a different format at a different time. So I'm going to continue on I'm laying down that Payne's Gray and I'll lay that stencil down once again and we'll see if we can figure out exactly what I did that um, I could do better this time. I'm going to go ahead and leave the stencil down and put the orange down on top of the stencil this time. Now we'll lift it up and here is probably the most difficult thing for me is I am not a patient sort so kind of giving it that time to dry is probably the hardest thing for me in the gel press printing because I want immediate results. So now I'm going to lay down some yellow and this is a bright yellow I have a comb I'm just combing through lightly through that yellow and I'm thinking about laying down another color which is why I was fanning that to dry it a little, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just pull this now and see. I'm kind of anxious to see how that turns out. So here we go. And I like that. I hope you like it too. I think that turned out pretty good. So let's try it once again. This is the Payne's Gray. The 
or I put the stencil to the far left of my press this time and lay some of those sunflowers just to get a little different orientation. Just giving them a little bit of pressure to get a good connection and to remove some of that. I'm taking some of the paint off with my brayer. And I think that has left a pretty solid image down on that press. And I have pulled a cool gray or a blue gray and a gray green. And I'm mixing those two together on top of that Payne's gray. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that print. And it looks like I'm pulling up, not pulling up some of the paint. So let me just spray that down a little bit and come from the other, other end. Pulling out the Baron to make sure I've got a good connection. I have just that one little section there that doesn't want to pull. There we go. Now that I have the prints all complete, I just wanted to kind of review because I didn't keep you in the loop when I was printing all of these. So I wanted to quickly review everything that I did. You kind of saw the method I was going in and the direction I was going. Now I'm sorting these papers and I'm trying to choose three out of all of the prints to display on a three and three quarter inch by five inch canvas. So I want to be some kind of continuity in color, but not completely. Um, I, I just want three that I can land on and display on these small canvases. So I've chosen this one. I'm going to measure once again to make sure I have the right dimension. And I will cut my piece to that size. And I went ahead and just drew around it because I think that's probably going to be easier than trying to measure. And we'll get that cut right to the three and three quarter inch by five inch. Three and three quarter inch in width and five inch in height. So there we go. That fits nicely. I'll pull out my glue and water mixture and glue that down. Trim it up to make sure it's flush with the edges. And I'm not wrapping the edges with this paper. I'm going to paint the edges with an acrylic black paint. I'm not going to show the footage of me painting the outside edges of that canvas because that's pretty boring and I think you get that. So we'll just paint those edges in a solid black to give that kind of shadow effect. And now, because I'm using a Christy Hartman stencil, and I think you ought to go over to at Christy Hartman, her YouTube channel, and watch how she utilizes the stencils that she creates. And she put together this um, envelope book and had her gel press prints inside this book. And one of the things that she does on a pretty frequent basis is she'll create this feature stripe that's kind of 
the continuity of some of her pieces. And, and I really like that. So to honor her stencil, I'm going to pull out a contrasting color and make it a feature stripe here on this small canvas. I'll glue that into place, flip it over and trim it, and set it aside and let it dry. And I'm going to pick two more gel press prints. I'm going to isolate two areas in those gel press prints, and we are going to wind up with three small canvases that we are going to come back and paint the outside edge a dark black or a Mars black to give us that shadow type effect on this print. And here are the three pieces finished. These are the images that I chose. I did go back in and on that stripe do something that I always do, which is the liquid pearls and put the three drops of the copper liquid pearls on each piece, which to me kind of pulls everything together. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll follow along with me by hitting that subscribe. That notification bell lets you know when I add additional content. And of course, that like helps my channel. I appreciate it greatly. If you want to watch the coffee cup prompts with other stencils, you can find that playlist right here.